Hey guys, Johnny here from OptiZen AI. In this video, I'm just going to walk through uh, some results for a client. So it's a bit of a client case study. I'm also a partner in a technical e-commerce agency, which is actually based in the UK. And within that agency, we do a lot of work with not only uh, e-commerce clients, but also large enterprise clients, essentially mainly on WordPress. Um, so the e-commerce clients we work with there, a lot of them are on WooCommerce. So this particular case study, it was essentially a, a, a complete theme rebuild. And we've had, uh, once that theme rebuild was completed and Google and the other search engines were able to come and recrawl the site and, and uh, then actually value the pages again, um, we saw quite a spike in uh, organic traffic and rankings. I'm just going to go up to my other screen and I'm going to uh, see whether I can pull across. I can't obviously show that client itself for uh, privacy reasons, but I've taken some screenshots. And this is obviously our AREFs graph. And then I'll, I'll go through uh, the Core Web Vitals as well, because there's three main elements uh, that we believe has impacted the sort of spiked growth since we completed the build. So you can see it was ticking along uh, for its organic traffic. And then uh, here, we did start getting some some uh, growth organically, just some, some of the work we'd done on the previous version of the theme. And then once the same theme was completed, we've got a real spike in traffic up as well. So, and that's also, we're seeing that coming from an, a quite an explosion in rankings. So category pages that were ranking on uh, sort of the bottom of page one have spiked to position one, position two, and we're seeing that pretty consistently for all the categories within this store. And then also uh, we're seeing the product pages as well. It's got quite a, a strong blog uh, and article presence also, uh, and they've been ticking along nicely, also sort of growing in organic traffic and ranking slowly, but as soon as we completed this theme rebuild, and um, we, we completed this about four weeks ago, we saw everything spike. So just gives you a bit of an idea um, on on the trend of what's happening with this particular site. So I'll just move that out of the way. And then the three main things that we believe have impacted this, uh, number one, it was pretty slow uh, with, the, um, with the previous theme. We kept it on the same hosting, but just a, a bit of performance optimization there. Um, some other team members in our in our team actually completed those tasks. So I'm not gonna go into the technical details. There might be another case study going out with some more detail on that uh, in, in a few weeks time. So Core Web Vitals improved um, and I'll show you those in a second. Now, what we also did was the, and this goes to the, the question of a lot of people still get concerned when they're doing whole site redirects or changing the structure of a website completely. And sometimes you might need to do that. For example, in this case, the WooCommerce default URL setup is with URL strings is you have your domain name and then category pages go into a, a product hyphen category slug, and then you'll have your category and then the product name yeah. after that. So what we actually did with this site was we stripped out the product category. We just did that with rank math, uh, stripped out the product category and then redirected all the previous uh, URL strings to the new URL strings. So now with this completion of the build, it's now the domain, then the, the actual category name. And then the product name. And then also uh, in a similar vein, uh, if we create, we created, well, there was all, already subcategories created, um, but they had the old product category slug in them. So once that's stripped out, then it, we can have our subcategories as a further string as well. So um, essentially the main change from for the URL strings was to strip out the product category, which is simple to do now with something like Rank Math, and then uh, redirected all the relevant or the, the pages to the new URL string. So that was completed, and we did that. Uh, we did that for every single page, every single product on the site itself. And then also, uh, we adjusted some of the page layout for our category pages, and there was uh, a bit of nuance in, the, in there, which I'll go through in a second. Also, okay. So we're going to look at 
Core Web Vitals. So we're still not perfect yet. Um, we've got a, a couple here in desktop that um, we've passed Core Web Vitals, but um, a couple of points here, the time to first byte and, and the FCP, we've still got a bit of an improvement there. But um, I don't have uh, previous screenshots, but this was pretty poor. Uh, everything was essentially in the red uh, before we completed that theme rebuild. Again, pretty standard stuff you want to be doing uh, on any new site or, or a rebuild to, to try and get your core web vitals organized. A lot of people are still talking about whether it actually has an impact on rankings or not. Um, we believe it does. Uh, it's just something that, that Google wants to see. So that's on desktop. And then I'll also bring on over mobile. Okay, I'm just trying to find. Okay, there's the mobile core web vitals. So much better than it was. Was again, we've still got we could improve on the time to first byte, but passing our core web vitals now. So that was uh, obviously one of the first things that would have been achieved as soon as the theme rebuild was complete. And, and again, there'll be maybe another case study coming out in that uh, because. No, this wasn't a large store. It's like only 200, 300 pages. But when you get into large uh, WooCommerce stores, um, it can be it can be a limitation. It can be tricky to actually get those core web vitals passed. So that's the first two things uh, have had an impact, we believe, is the core web vitals and then our URL redirects. So my point on the redirects is uh, that query on whether if you do, in the past, if you did redirect, especially if you did a whole site redirect, you might see a bit of a pullback on URLs and then hopefully you want to see um, rankings actually come back and maybe even come back better. But a lot of times in the past, um, there's been uh, situations where once you do that redirect, the site will pull back and it takes either a very long time to come back or it doesn't come back as well. But uh, the way Google are looking at things now, it, to me, it's how it should work if you're providing uh, Google with a more optimized URL. If you do a redirect and once they revalue that page, you should get that immediate benefit. So certainly that's what we're seeing now. One thing also is with with the domain structure, or sorry, the, the URL structure is we kept the uh, the category slugs and the product slugs slugs quite short. So for example, if this was uh, running shoes kept it as sneakers so uh, the majority i think maybe even 100 percent of the category slugs uh one uh, maybe two words not not longer than that and then same with products some of the products um had some uh quite long strings and we reduced some of those but uh, trying to keep the the point is trying to keep the product url strings um smaller rather than getting too long and broad. But I believe that the biggest impact, um, certainly because we, we saw a spike in those category pages pretty well three to four weeks after the theme rebuild was live, was a reduction in the, the category slug uh, size. So being much more concise, much more relevant. Um, it did have some category pages in there that was sort of five, six, even seven word strings long. And uh, it's it make, it's confusing, it's messy, and um, many times we've said we, we shorten and be more concise. It does have a, a, a much greater impact. So, again, you know, we're, we're just assuming a lot of this. We're not sure whether there's 100% why this site has, uh, has grown significantly after the rebuild. But these are the main things we did, and we can just see, uh, see the results. Okay, so looking at page layout, so I'm just going to talk about category pages. So with our e-commerce category pages, and I'm not very good at writing with this in my mouse. So we have a H1 title at the top of the page. And obviously you've got you've got a menu up here as well. Um, so we have a, a H1 at the top, and that's pretty standard for any e-commerce category page. Then we have our description. So we have generally have two or three sentences of description and then Within that description also, we'll have some uh, internal linking to relevant subcategories. So we'll link out to the relevant subcategories and then those subcategories also will link back to this main category page. So we, we keep the, the silos 
uh, quite tight. So yes, we might also have some related products and we've got our menu that also links to our subcategories, but we've got the internal links with our determined anchor text in the body of the actual page. So between the body tags. Then obviously uh, we would have our product read next, where we've got all our products in here. Man, I'm bad at this. So we'd have all our products in here, um, pretty standard. But then what we also like to do is, what we all, I'm just gonna get rid of that. So what we also like to do is have some content below the product grid here. So I'll have, and this is where we can add frequently asked questions. We can link out to further categories and maybe some prominent products we want to link out to, uh, some history on, you know, the type of products example. So just creating more relevant page, um, using that section below the product read. So what a lot of people will do if they, if they like to use this strategy is I'll have a read more section here. So if you click the read more, it'll open up that description, the top description that makes it longer for the reader. Um, so that can work as well, um, but we find this um, just from usability, you, you just can read that uh, first couple of sentences and they've got the product read. So they've got the, what they're actually looking at, their products. It's an e-commerce store, for example. So they want to be looking at their products. That's what they came to the store for. And then we can have our deeper information here at the bottom. Um, really good place here we find to put our frequently asked questions. We'll then add um, FAQ schema as well. And, and sometimes some deeper schema. So that was um, previously on this site, uh, this section here was pretty thin. There might've been a sentence or two or none whatsoever, but now we've, we've filled this out um, with, with a lot more content, more question, frequently asked questions example. Uh, and also the internal linking was uh, probably, a lot of pages didn't ha have any internal links at all. So, um, and we've seen since, the site has been recrawled, uh, immediate boost in category pages. So again, uh, which of these three have had the major impact? Uh, hard to, to, to really get an idea, but my, uh, my theory is it's a combination of all, because these are the three main things we actually achieve with this site rebuild. And um, obviously when we get some growth like this and that spike around the same time, um, the strategy that we've employed has actually worked. But one of the main things I did want to just sort of uh, show was that the URL redirects didn't have a negative impact at all. And I can't see that pulling back anytime soon. Um, it, it, there was probably, if we look here, there was probably a little bit of a, a plateau here as the site was getting recrawled and revalued, and then it spiked uh, quite significantly um, after that sort of three to four weeks after. Okay, hope that was helpful. Just some uh, some small e-commerce uh, strategies that you can employ certainly when you're doing a rebuild and uh, not worrying too much about redirects if you're then creating URL strings and URL slugs in the right way, the way that Google actually likes them. Yeah, thanks, talk to you later on.